Hey, hello, this is Module 4, Family Support with Technology. I'm, I'm Orlando Cruz. And I am Joanne Targlop. We'll be taking you through this module. The first thing we're going to look at is the three models of learning that we have for this school year. We have home learning online instruction, home learning hard copy curriculum, and we also have the traditional face-to-face. -face. Please note that these are the three options that are afforded to our families, and we'll be working with these three modalities as we go through the module. Here are some expectations across all those three options. Through these three options, we need to also have a student personal academic plan, progressive implementation of the models of learning, and common lesson design parts and guidance. Development of a student personal academic plan. In their plan, we need to make sure that they included are the student schedules, model description, and expectation for model. We also want to make sure your syllabus is included, your grading policies, and a list of your content priority skills, standards, and topics. All students will be afforded a GDOE email account, and we need to make sure that they're able to access it. We also want to make sure that if they have anything to clarify, we provide office hours and when those will be available. Here's a sample schedule that we pulled from a previous training under special education. And with this training, they were able to provide a sample schedule that families can use to create some routine, a sense of normalcy. That way, regardless of the, the reporting to school every three days, or if they're strictly online, they're able to still follow a schedule and create a routine for them to find success. We also want to discuss the progressive implementation of the models of learning. The district is recommending three phases to go through this school year. In the first phase, this is probably the most important one. We're hoping that we can build that relationship. We understand that a positive relationship is integral to success. So the first phase is really going to be making contact with our families, making sure that we have lanes of communication that are easy to navigate, we want to understand the dynamics of all our families, the dynamics of our students, so that we can better serve their needs. After we have that established, then we can move on to the second phase. In the second phase, we're moving into curriculum and instruction. This is when we can share content expectations, content activities, learning activities, projects, and hopefully provide that rich learning experience that we used to, used to have in the classroom. And in the third phase, with polish and collaboration and practice, we're looking forward and gaining momentum. Understand that these three phases are cyclical, right? It doesn't have to follow one after the other. And in an event of a crisis or, or something else comes up, we may have to go back to phase one. And going back to phase one to make sure that those social and emotional supports are provided when needed. In our common lesson design parts and guidance, we want to keep in mind that we are which audience we're serving. We are sending this home to our families. So maybe with our colleagues, there's a lot of acronyms. There's a lot of um, career-specific language that we want to avoid. Right. All of these planning pieces are very, very important, but we want to make sure that it serves the audience that we're sending it home to. We also want to go over content and activities that we're going to be sending home. For the parent student information and instruction for lessons, keeping in mind that we are sending these home to our parents, we want to make sure that it, it is simplified, it is clear, it is concise. The traditional lesson plan is great for sharing ideas with educators, but when we're working with our families, our parents are going to be using these. So we need to make sure that we're clear on what the students will be learning and will be practicing for the week, right? Why this knowledge or this activity is, is important for their development and uh, what activities we're going to be learning or practicing uh, for this skill and knowledge, 
right? We want to clearly indicate what is included in the packet so that labeling it will be helpful and we can make sure that they're complete before they, they engage the activity. We also want to discuss content. So the content explanation, it's really important that, uh, that there's a clear understanding, right? Having that background knowledge gives value to the lesson. So having parents understand how this all connects, right? With all their reading materials, the videos, the slides, the handouts, will provide, will be able to provide uh, all the understanding parents need to find success, right? We can't assume anything. We want to make sure everything is clarified and that parents are prepared to bring their kids through that educational process. And lastly, these engaging activities. We're very seasoned in the classroom and we know what to look for, right? We, we can go in and we can watch the learning process and we know what to look for. But our parents are going to need guidance on that. So on top of the, the simplification or making it concise, we need to make sure that all those step-by-step -step instructions are provided and then with notations to help them see what it should look like as they're going through a learning process. To support that, we also want to make sure that office hours are provided and clear so that if they need any clarification, we're able to support them with the learning process. We also want to provide parents with that feedback just to make sure that they are assured that they are finding all the success that they should be finding. We also want to talk about accommodations, right? We have diverse learners and learning modalities are going to be provided to help these students succeed. There are many, many strategies that could prove beneficial. So we want to make sure our parents are also equipped with that. In the bigger picture, through all of this, in partnership with our parents and our students, we want to adopt this growth mindset. This growth mindset has been a trending um, approach and it's more over shifting instead of finding a problem and quitting. We're finding problems and we're finding those failures as a point of growth, right? Not, hey, uh, I, we found something and we, we failed at it and we're going to quit. It's we found something, we can learn from it and we can progress regardless. So with that uh, discussed, we want to go deeper into Module 4, Family Support with Technology. At the end of this module, we're hoping that participants will be able to identify, develop, and implement the structures and supports that will ensure success with our students. Again, we're working with students, teacher, and parents, right? Students may have very little experience with distance learning. We need a plan to make sure that they know how to navigate all the online pieces that we provide for them, the hard copy packets, and we're also prepared in the classroom to continue learning on the days that they're not in the classroom with us, right? Our teachers, right, we have these, these experiences where we can create rich learning activities, but now we have to create those activities, those ex experiences over distances. And then, of course, our parents. Now more than ever, our parents are going to be an important support to make sure our students have exactly what they need to find success. With these relationships, like we talked in phase one, right, we want to make sure that we have that positive relationship, that we are in partnership for their success, that they understand that we have students' best interests in mind. Right? Education is a partnership between student, teacher, and guardians, parents and guardians. And of course, uh, they like to mention that people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Here are nine ways to improve parent-teacher communication. I know we will be uh, faced with a lot of challenges as we begin to start the school year, but let's focus on building that partnership between students, teachers, and our parents, our guardians. We want to build a rich relationship with our parents. How can we make this happen? What does it look like? Well, 
It begins with communication. Here are nine ways, but not limited to improving the way we communicate with our parents. When we communicate with our parents via phone calls, text messages, WhatsApp chats, video calls, we want to calm, be calm, be warm, and be sincere in our tone. We want to be positive. We want to communicate with positivity. Share something positive about their child. Let them know how well their child is doing in reading, in math. Trust. We want our parents to trust Trust us with their child in their education. Communicate often. It might be just a phone call that works best for a parent, but find out what's the best form of communication for the parents. Is it just that simple phone call? Is it text messaging? Is it via email? Is it through your school website, your team website? Whatever the case may be, just always be consistent and have that, um, what's the word I'm using? <laughs> I'm thinking about consistency <laughs> and stick with it. Uh, let parents feel, let parents feel that they are valuable. Encourage their continued involvement in their child's learning. Acknowledge that involvement. Let them know from time to time that they are doing an amazing job with home learning, keeping that positive attitude motivated. Keeping that positive attitude motivates them to do more for their child. Ask questions and listen. Ask about their child's likes and dislikes. What sports are they into? Get to know your students. Connect with them socially and emotionally. And let's not assume that everything is okay at home. Be sensitive to individual family needs and their home situation. No matter the modality of learning that a family chooses, we are in this together. There might be some hiccups along the way. Just take it slow. Step back. Breathe. Then push forward and make adjustments. Remember, we want to communicate with our parents the best way we know how. Okay, so going over this, now we have some key procedures. All right, these are the most common issues that may come up when we launch our modalities for learning. Okay, the first one. We're going to look at website, Google and websites and Google Classroom, right? Simply with websites, we can't assume that students are able to navigate these. It's challenging enough to remember the website, so making sure that students are able to access this on their devices, maybe on their smartphone, their tablets, their laptops, are going to be key to making sure they can access that information. Google Classroom is going to be a very common platform to deliver our curriculum. And with that curriculum, we want to make sure that they can, they can check all the assignments and they can check all the resources they need that we provide on that Google Classroom. Another piece that's going to be really important is going to be their login, username, and passwords. All our students are afforded a GDOE email. Unfortunately, this is going to be a piece that we need to practice together. Keeping this safe is going to be very important. Very important to make sure that they can get all the curriculum that they have. We know how challenging it is. And half the time, students are going to be, Mr. Cruz, I, I forgot my password. I don't know my email. So we need to work in partnership with our parents to make sure this information is readily available and safely kept. Regardless of how well we keep that information, we still need to make sure we have the tech support. Students may change their password and they could forget it. And if they're gonna be waiting two weeks before they can get their password again, it's gonna be very challenging to keep up with all the expectations. So it's nice to make sure that we have the access 
by working through FSAIS so that maybe one person per grade level or maybe by team or even content has that access to help students reset their passwords. Without their GDOE email account, they're not going to be able to access our Google Classroom. So we need to make sure that they keep it safe and in the event that they lose it, we can still help them retrieve it. Here are a few more that we want to discuss. It's easy to assume that students know how to submit work, but this is going to be a key piece in making sure students aren't frustrated in working through the assignments and expectations of our classes. Things like attaching a file, saving a picture, the correct document format, right? Where to click, where to browse, where to link. These are things that we're going to have to really think about and explain step by step, maybe with a video on how to accomplish. Formatting assignments, right? Are we going to work strictly on Google Docs? Are we going to be accepting Word documents? Is it going to be a JPEG? We want to make sure that we want to give them the details needed so that they can format those assignments properly. How do you want them to include the name, the course, the date, maybe the, the assignment description? Those all need to be communicated clearly. And of course, routines. We are hoping to video conference with our distance learners. And we're in this together, so that means with, within our school, we're going to have to plan logistically, making sure we can avoid conflicts. We have households that may have multiple students in the education system, and we all can't have a video conference at 9 a.m. So making sure we're sensitive uh, to these schedules, we want to avoid those conflicting video conferences. Here are a couple of resources we thought might be most helpful for this school year. The first one is going to be a class or team website. Some educators have launched their own personal website, right, to serve their students. But some educators thought it might be better to launch a team website to serve a cohort of students. With, with whichever means we want to explore, this is going to be a great way to centralize information about the expectations of assignments and projects and deadlines that your class may have. Weebly, Wix, and Google Sites are among the top and easiest to navigate and build a website. Another software that is probably going to be very helpful this school year is screen capture software. The one we're using to make this, this video for you is exactly what we want to share with you. It allows you to record your screen and share that information through all three modalities. So the kids that come in on Monday, if you want to share the agenda, the objectives, and maybe the step-by-step -step procedures for your first learning assignment, you can capture that and have them play it. So when they need clarification, we can avoid having to repeat ourselves and they simply have to press replay. Taking that same video and putting it on your website can make this information available to our distance learners. Our online community that's going to be learning on, uh, through virtually, right, would find it really helpful not having to wait for a teacher's video conference. They can simply click play and view the video at their convenience any time of the day and get the details they need to find success and get through the learning process. We also want to share with you QR codes. QR codes are a great way to share digital content. You've probably seen these at restaurants or maybe in a book or a poster, but we're able to use this in the education setting as well. It's challenging to share a website address. It's a very long address. The URL is usually HTTP colon backslash backslash www and one small mistake and they're not able to access that information. However, if we use a QR code to get that to them, we can print them on a flyer or have sent them with the hard packets and then they can use their phone open their camera, and access that information instantly. 
right? These QR codes, QR stands for quick response. It's one way that we can reach, reach a majority of our students. We understand that not all families have a smartphone, but a majority do. Through the extensive polls that we've been finding, a majority have access to a smartphone. So what better way to share your video tutorial that you have on YouTube than to send it via QR code with a flyer that comes home weekly. This QR code actually leads to a video tutorial on how to make QR codes. If you don't want, if you don't, uh, you can't pull it up, right? Simply going on YouTube and searching how to make a QR code will help. If you are confident enough, if you just go to Google and click QR code generator, you'll find a website where you just insert a picture, a document, a, a link, or a website address, and it will generate this QR code. And all you have to do is save it and put it on the document you want to print out and send out to our families. Here's an example of the screen capture software that we use to make a simple introduction to the lesson. On today's agenda, we have a few things to take care of. First, we're going to have some class introductions. We're going to go over some class expectations. We're going to end with an activity with math illustrations. But first, let's go over our objective. Our objective today, students will be able to understand the importance of adopting a growth mindset to be successful in college, career, and life. Okay, so that was our example for screen capture software. The, the software we used was this one online called Screencast-O-Matic. What's nice is that this there's a free version that allows you to record and share that with our families. There's also a paid version, which is like maybe $4 a month. And if you notice, there were subtitles. The paid version allows you extra features to help highlight all the information you want to send home or post online. There's um there's a lot of feature a, a lot of implications for this software. We can already imagine being able to record your screen to show them how to attach their homework, how to attach a project, how to submit their assignment. So with collaboration, each school might be able to create one tutorial for the entire student body without having to recreate that over and over again for every single team. There are dozens and dozens of apps, many, many out there, and all of them will be helpful in communicating with our families, our parents and our students, right? It's just a matter of trying to figure out which ones fit best for each individual practice. Some are better for other teachers and some we wanna keep it simple. Right? It's all about creating that connection, and all of these are going to be um, options for that. Okay, so as we start planning um, how we will communicate with our parents, here's a quick start guide that you could use, um, and also you have um, the family support checklist. Um, Use that checklist to help you um, uh, write up your um, communication plan. So let's look at the questions we have here. How will we establish initial communication? Some notes we wrote down. Consider direct phone calls and, and creating your flyers. You could use the QR code to create. You have a flyer you created and you can use that QR code to, to send those uh, flyers out. How will we continue um, routine communication? Uh, it could be your weekly emails, weekly newsletters, phone calls. Um, uh, not just on Fridays, you want to make your phone calls uh, maybe twice a week. However, uh, you need to communicate with your parents. Um, what could happen to cause a breakdown in communication? What can we put in place to resolve these breakdowns? Um, you might want to implement procedures to address lost passwords, uh, record backup contact numbers. You might want to have that 
readily available uh, a, a file that you have on you to have that list of students, their phone numbers, their contacts, and I believe PowerSchool has a lot of that uh, demographic information uh, you can take and um, uh, keep in your records. Uh, what platforms can we use to maximize our digi digital presence? Um, Orlando had shared with you our school websites, uh, Facebook, maybe blogging, uh, YouTube, creating a YouTube channel. Um, <clears throat> uh, some of us had created Instagram uh, pages for our uh, students to, to um, follow. Uh, some teachers have done that. So Instagram is one way to uh, share your information with your families. Um, again, use the checklist here uh, to have you um, organize your plan. We also have the website on the bottom left. If you want to take a look at that, if you want a copy of this, you'll be able to follow that website and you'll get a copy. And please understand that this is a live document, so you can adjust it. Right? You can add on or delete the parts that you're not going to use so it can better fit your personal practice. Okay. We want to revisit our objective that we set at the beginning of this module. We're hoping that at the end of this session, participants will be able to identify, develop, and implement the structures and supports that will ensure success with our students. Right? We're juggling a lot. There's curriculum, instruction, and assessment, and we need to work that with our students, our teachers, and our parents. So we're hoping that we gave you a few ideas to help you make that connection and recreate those rich learning experiences over the three different modalities. Our follow-up se session, we're hoping that we're able to, to go over the modules that we went and with all the skills we just covered, come up with a plan, a draft, right, on how we can use these resources to engage and support parents at the beginning of school year. We need to consider information from modules three, diverse learners, the, our ESL population, our SPED population, and gate, our gifted learners. We want to make sure that these communication platforms will be shared throughout the upcoming follow-up session. Okay, that's the end of our module. We're hoping that the school year goes well. This is Orlando Cruz. And Joanne Chargloff. Please be safe.